YouTube, YTPC. How are you all doing? It's a very windy day here in Switzerland. Uh, so I'm sitting in the cellar because anywhere else is going to be a problem for my pipe. Uh, got back a few days ago from London where we spent almost two weeks and it was fantastic stay there. I've got a bit of uh, clippage to, to share, just a, a sample really, because there was so much that we did and that you could show, you could make a couple of hour video, you know, easily with everything that we looked at. But a representative sample is included here in this video. I'm smoking my Bing with the blue stem, really a lovely pipe. And I got, uh, at the time I've got the green and the red and this one, and they're all great pipes. And in it, I got a tin of Scarecrow, a warped Scarecrow indeed. I was lucky I just got a tin in time and uh, it arrived uh, when I got back and as it's, we're approaching Halloween, end of October, I thought I'll crack this one up, you know, and um, it's, uh, it's really an interesting one, I think. Um, basically says it's uh, Burley, Virginia, Black Cavendish, but it's a, uh, a Red Virginia Black Cavendish, which is proprietary, so there's a lot of uh, special tobacco that's been prepared um, to offer this cake. So it's, it's a, a cake tobacco. See it there? And as you see, I've already been nibbling at this one several times because it's, I think it's really good, you know? Um, now, it's described as an aromatic and I have to say, I, I always would say it's a crossover because it's not heavily topped. Um, I don't even think it's medium topped. Um, it says vanilla and chocolate. Um, and I think the tobaccos themselves uh, contribute a great deal of uh, the flavors and um, also the sweetness. So it's, almost like I'm smoking an English blend, which has been lightly topped, so it's a crossover. Um, at least that's my first impression. I'm not reviewing it here because uh, I've only smoked, well, maybe three pipes now, but um, it's got a funny property that when, when you put the cake in, you know, I usually fold it like a flake and rough it up a bit and then put it in, that it springs up and when you try and do your char light the strands of tobacco ri ri rise up in on fire like a, a scarecrow that's been in a burning field so it's kind of got its own Halloweeny character I think this one so you know you have to watch out for a few scorch marks if you're not careful that some of these little strands this is more or less like a ribbon cut that's been pressed into a flake, uh, leap out and land on your clothes, so you have to watch out. Well, as I said, London was fantastic. All the things we did. Uh, it's kind of surprising that everyone in London is slowly forgotten about masks and you know you'd think almost covid was over because in many pubs and uh, bars people are quite crammed together but still there's 40,000 cases a day in the UK so I think they've relaxed things a little bit early in my view um, as we were double vaccinated um, and we wore masks everywhere and so did the serving staff in many places so um, I think out of respect for them uh, it's only fair if, if we wear them as well so we were okay um, we did a two-day test after we arrived 
um, and uh, somebody on the plane had COVID and the National Health called us up and said, oh, you, you may have to uh, quarantine. That wasn't great news, was it? But I said, well, look, we're tourists. We, we don't have any National Health number here because they asked for a UK address. And they said, oh, oh, you're tourists, are you? As if, you know, could that be the case at all? And uh, they said, oh, are you double vaccinated? I said, yes. Uh, what with the Moderna vaccine? They said, oh, okay, very good. Um, well, uh, do you have any symptoms? No. Oh, well, uh, that's okay then. If you do get any symptoms, you have to quarantine, but otherwise, um, follow the instructions of your own country when you're abroad. Kind of strange, really. But we did everything according to the rules and we had our uh, COVID scans on our iPhones and um, sometimes people looked at them once they actually scanned them uh, and most of the time nobody checked nothing. So it was a bit, a bit odd. But anyway, all's good that ends well. We got back um, fine. And um, I was toying with the idea of going in December, but I decided not because it's going to be even more crowded and I think the COVID situation will not be very good. Rather odd, also, I saw some shortages in department stores and some stores, not acute, but... I was trying to buy some shirts there and where you normally have stacks and piles of sh shirts in these uh, House of Fraser or these department stores that they, they'd almost run out of my size. So, so I hope uh, that will level itself. We didn't have any problems with taxis. That's uh, good news that the, the petrol shortage was e easing greatly at that point so we were able to get about London no problem anyway let me show you a few clips with uh, short comments and um, you know you get a feeling of where we were and what we did <laughs> that is all here the monument in of course where it started which is Guess it already Pudding Lane. Here I'm standing where the baker had his shop. And here's the plaque. All of this is close to London Bridge. So here we are at the monument on the northern part of the uh, Bridge of London. Just to the left of that is this monument, which is the Fire of London Monument, which is quite magnificent. And of course is architecturally exquisite. And you see this gold crown up there very well from a great distance away and uh, of course it, they wrote it all in Latin you know which is uh, all right for the day not, not so useful today but we're gonna look at the clock is translated to English. I hope. Yeah. There you have it. Well, it started in 1666 and uh, in uh, Pudding Street, I think, uh, where bakeries and things like that. It's, that's still disputed today. The 
details of how it happened and the, the baker and uh, if he was really guilty of it and all of that. 89 churches were destroyed, 400 streets, 13,200 uh, uh, houses. So you can imagine that's pretty well sort of 80% of London, you know, back then. Look at these swans, magnificent, like that RAF Spitfire flyover. Well done, boys. Well done. Beautiful. So there's the building they call the toaster. I guess it looks like one, really, you know giant ele electrical apparatus in London. This is a shot of the shard from the uh, market that I showed and there it, it's like just a spike in glass so it's very appropriately named and we're going to take a view quite near the top. We shall see how far up we go and you can see all around London from there. Be interesting. So you see that water bridge across the Thames in the middle, and right at the other end of that is MI6. And a little bit to the right of that is St. Martin on the Fields Church Tower, and behind it is Trafalgar Square. So if you ever come up here to the 72nd floor where the cocktail bar is, that's uh, one reason to be here. But uh, bring a little opera class with you or a small pair of binoculars. It really helps you to locate these famous landmarks. But extraordinary is you can see the whole expanse of the city of London all the way to the suburbs and almost to the green belt uh, area around it and the hills and the horizon so it really is the tallest uh, building in Europe which it sets the record uh, at the moment at least. Alright. The more promoting and good reviews we can get for our bar, the better. Good. Okay, then we do that. As my sexy assistant, Jeff Nick is showing, making the great fire. <laughs> <laughs> Pants are going to be on fire just now. Mm. <laughs> it might be good for my cold. Very good for your cold. Clear them sinuses up. Without sugar. Without sugar. Of course. <laughs> That's the nice sour taste. Yeah. I, I love it sour, you know. Yeah. Not the calories. <laughs> yeah. This is London Bridge Station, so there you see all the railway lines. And right to the left, there's Tower Bridge and the River Thames. one of the many London ferries going along the Thames. There's the uh, post office tower still. And now we're down from the Shard. We came all that way down. Can you believe it? It was the most marvelous experience. You have to do it if you're in London. I tell you, the cocktails. London is officially now the cocktail centre of the world. So you've got pubs around here, look like the market porter, which is the guy that carried stuff around and he looked exactly like that bloke up there. <laughs> I'm sure that's an interesting pub. Maybe I'll try that out later on. So here we are at Borough Market. This is under London Bridge. If you're going to uh, visit the Shard, it's very 
close to that uh, spiky tall building where you can do views and you find the most marvellous food markets here you have mushrooms and risottos but everything you know and all this fantastic new fresh produce of chanterelles and all kinds of beautiful mushrooms and fruits and vegetables of course everywhere and then of course uh, the butcher shops with fantastic selections of meat and uh, t-bone steaks and chickens and sausages you know and then look at the fish look at the fish look at these octopus Look at them, absolutely, and the lobsters, you name it, the, the whole nine yards, and then you, you've got this beautiful lobster tank here, if you really part of the those. Amazing, octopus and squid everywhere, eels, on ice, can you believe? And the sausage rolls and pasties were wonderful. Well, you find things in London. The Nomad Hotel was made out of the old criminal courts and they preserved the courtroom. And this is the courtroom where Oscar Wilde was sentenced. Well, I found a couple of pipe shops. This one is in Covent Garden and actually has a nice selection of pipes and tobaccos, though very small. Take a look. A small window, but quite a wide offering. And Covent Garden is a must if you're going to London. And here's where I bought my slippers. And it's a wonderful shop if you're looking for shoes or slippers in London. Well, everybody knows Timaeus or Cigars, and this is a new shop in Ryder Street and they have a great selection of whiskies and cigars, but also some pipe tobaccos and pipes. This is Victoria Embankment Park near the Houses of Parliament. Not far away is a statue of William Shakespeare, Will the Quill. And in Green Park, opposite Apsley House, is a statue of his Grace, the first Duke of Wellington, and me. Well, we went to several ga art galleries. This is the Tate Gallery, British Art, um, and I was delighted to see an uh, exhibition of Thomas Gainsborough uh, and this beautiful Italian dancer, Giovanna Bacelli, uh, now, Thomas Gainsborough was born in my hometown of Sudbury in Suffolk, and you can still visit his house there as a museum. This is one of his early works, and the little lady there looks rather ghostly and very petite. And there were just lots of great paintings from him, and he had an atelier on Pall Mall, not far from the club, and here's the plaque. And also, who lived a couple of houses down, is Nell Gwynn. Would you believe it? <laughs> well, I love the arcades in London. This is the Burlington Arcade, one of my favourites. And they had uh, an exhibition to the James Bond movie, which was uh, opening, which we saw also there. And I had a glass of Bollinger champagne at that arcade. This is the Royal Academy of Art. I found the architecture in London is just staggering. Of course, this is good old St. Paul's Cathedral, which is uh, equally magnificent. Always interesting is um, the telephone boxes. Uh, apparently the ones with phones still in them are painted black these days. Always fascinating the shops in London. This uh, shop only makes walking sticks and umbrellas. Um, so I had to have a look in the shop and uh, was amazed to find 
that there is a walking stick with a pipe handle and it's actually a functioning pipe that you can take out and put together. Quite extraordinary. They had also one very lovely eagle carved Ardor pipe, which uh, looks really beautiful. You see it here in close up and it has a nice screw cap on top. Oh, it was almost one more pipe, you know, but I resisted it. What I love about London is there's always so many new things to find. Um, uh, there's a great guy on YouTube, uh, Jules Walking Tours of London. Uh, several other channels also tell you about history of certain places and all of that, but he's the most entertaining one, I think. I'll leave a link below because uh, if you're preparing a trip for London, it's always good to have a quick look because he gives you a few tips of uh, places you could look at which are maybe not so well known on the tourist tour. For example, we uh, had a look at that uh, Nomad Hotel which had those court courthouse room because it was actually a hotel built out of an old uh, criminal justice court in London. So um, that was quite fascinating and uh, he tips you off to all kinds of things like that. So um, that made the, this trip particularly rich. My wife wanted to go to the Shard and take the view up there and it, it absolutely is a magnificent view. I think it's the tallest building in Europe at the moment. Well, one of the events in London is I met um, Jack the Piper, Giuliano. So uh, it was uh, great that he could meet up. We had uh, lunch at my club and um, really had a lovely time. Good old smoke on the uh, veranda that they have there where you can smoke. And uh, it, was, it was really lovely to see him actually, you know, in person. And... Um, all about these activities and uh, his renovation of the new place he's going to be living. So that was really great. That was really a highlight the whole trip. I would recommend uh, this good old scarecrow here to anyone who actually doesn't favour uh, medium or heavily topped um, aromatics and likes to have something very lightly topped, which has basically got a huge contribution from the quality tobaccos in it and um, I very much like this. Um, I think it's it's uh, a wonderful innovation, something different. Retro hail and um, sort of the aftertaste, you pick up some of those topping flavours but uh, also ones from these really terrific quality tobaccos in it. So. Uh, if they come around with another issue, get yourself one. It's uh, really good, uh, I think. I've got a few ideas for other videos and one or two that I owe people. Um, um, so I will be catching up with those over the next few days. So give me a little time and more is to come. Well, you all take care. Look after yourselves and uh, I'll see you in uh, three or four days or so. Cheers.